This week, another alliance disbands. Sovereignty changes take place in Geminate and Tenerifis. The conflict between Wrecking Crew and Fire ramps up. Also in Tenerifis, we have a sad red panda and a happy Dichi. Four more ex-Pappy keep stars are destroyed in the south and the alliance tournament feeders are almost here. Hello pod people, I'm Frost and this is your weekly EVE Online update. Welcome back. So as always, before we jump into the show itself, I have to announce my Scope Syndication winners from last week's prize draw. And my winners are Dame du Nord and Raven of Soul. So congratulations to both of my winners. Uh, I've been chatting on uh, Discord to Dame du Nord. Apparently she makes custom jewelry. Uh, she's going to do a set of earrings for me and I will feature those when I receive them and also give her store a little mention, I think. So I have two more Abaddon Scope Syndication skins to give away a little bit later on in the show and I'll give you all the details then. Right, so let's get started. First piece of news, uh, I mentioned an alliance disbanding. Uh, Requiem Eternal will be disbanding on the 1st of September. Now, the reasons given for this were actually real life issues for leadership, so I wish them all the best uh, in dealing with those issues. And apparently the, uh, one of the leaders as well is actually going to retire from EVE. So it's a pretty big deal when we kind of lose a leader from the game. Uh, and like I said, I wish them all the best. So uh, Requiem Eternal or Eternal Requiem was their most recent name. Uh, so you can see here at the moment there are 807 members. They lost a few members a few weeks ago. And then like I said, the 1st of September, that will then be dropping down. Uh, they were previously called Requiem Eternal, been around since 2013. So a long-standing alliance. So it's a shame to see them go. All right, so now we're going to go on to um, something I need to mention last week. There we go. Uh, which was I called uh, the Alliance. Oops, my pen was already going there. Uh, up here, I called them Volta and Friends because I couldn't remember their name. And uh, lots of people came through and uh, got me up to date. So their proper name is now uh, <laughs> Greater Trash Coalition. They were called Hostile States for a while, but they are now officially Greater Trash Coalition. So there we go. So we've cleared that up. And uh, talking of uh, Greater Trash Coalition, uh, if we actually jump into tribute, uh, Volta actually managed to kind of sneak in and grab some iHubs. Uh, let's see if my pen's working. There we go. Uh, grab some iHubs up here in the top left hand corner that belong to Costco. I believe Costco is actually a renter alliance rather than actually a member of fraternity. I didn't get a chance to check with fraternity and hopefully they'll correct me if, uh, if necessary. But the main thing here is obviously um, Volta have got themselves a little bit implanted in tribute and that will allow them to project into tribute and cause some hassles up there. And as you know, uh, Greater Trash Coalition and Winter Coalition kind of have tit for tat battles and kind of go into each other's territories and, and harass on a regular basis. Now, we are going to go over and talk about Veil of the Silent. So in Veil of the Silent, we have a fight happened between Winter Coalition and Snuffed Out. Now, I mentioned last week that it was a bit bizarre that I hadn't seen them because like, it's been a, almost a weekly thing uh, on their part in terms of the engagements they've been getting involved in. And it actually happened as the video was airing last week. So that was on Tuesday the 24th. Now, I have a battle report somewhere around here. There we go. Here we go. So. Uh, it took place in LFM-OV and uh, basically what happened was in it, uh, the initiative managed to tackle a raw call. Uh, Snuff got wind of this and dropped dreads and then Winter Coalition did a drop. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's pretty much the same situation that we had like a couple of weeks ago. Loads and loads and loads of dreads from Snuffed Out on the right uh, and then loads and loads of super caps like Titans primarily. Uh, on the left here from Fraternity, as you can see, I'm scrolling down. We've still got Titans. There we go. We're on to Supers now. There's more Supers, more Supers, more Supers, more Supers, more Supers, more Supers. And then we can finally get onto Minikawas and then some Dreads. So um, in this situation, it's a little bit different from last week. Uh, last or The week before, the last time uh, Snuffed Out were able to kill three Titans. Uh, they just had so much damage, they were able to just, you know, out for them almost pretty much off the grid. This time around it didn't work out that way, it went the other way and so uh, Snuffed Out took most of the damage, taking 271 billion versus 126 billion for Winter Co. Uh, what is interesting here and it's uh, something that you know is of concern which is we talked about actually last week which is the apparent 
uh, lack of available dreadnoughts uh, in low sec. The dreadnoughts aren't being built in low sec apparently. So snuffed out have a decent cache, but this cache isn't kind of endless. So uh, hopefully they'll be able to maintain these fights and continue the fights going. It's not from lack of, of funds and, and the ability to fund their alliance. It's going to be mostly the most likely outcome is that potentially they're just not going to be able to get hold of the dreads to be able to bring them to fight. So I don't know how many caches they have out there where they can move stuff around, uh, but hopefully they will be able to kind of maintain this until the kind of scarcity thing ends properly and then uh, we start seeing more dreads being built at more reasonable prices as well. Okay, so uh, then we're going to go over and jump over to Geminate. So as you know, Geminate is where Brave uh, have been moving in and what we've seen is a clean out that's kind of started last week, I touched on it last week, of Dark Side. So what has happened since then? Well, Brave have now kind of solidified themselves into this constellation. Uh, they are now moving down into this region. We can also see the FRT down the bottom here. Uh, the fraternity ones, they're, they're kind of being reinforced. So I'm assuming that they're letting Brave just take those um, as a fraternity really don't have any reason to be down here. Uh, and then we have uh, Tissue, whose name I always forget because it's not related to uh, their, their name. That's it, Psychotic Tendencies. So uh, all of their eye hubs have been hit as well down here in the bottom left. So one would assume that that's Brave doing their thing and they're kind of just trying to get themselves settled into this constellation down here as well and get themselves fairly well implanted. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Pandemic Horde have been pretty active in Geminate as well. Uh, as we know, they've been going off into uh, Vale of the Silent and attacking Fraternity as they've kind of their standards have now been reset. But it does look like they are helping Brave as well, getting established. In fact, there was a uh, Fortizar in Oigenen that belonged to uh, Brotherhood of Nod, which were basically a group that were just coming in to germinate to harass. And it looks like their Fortizar was taken out by Pandemic Horde. So uh, mostly what we've been seeing this week, uh, apart from in the southeast where we've actually got a proper conflict going on, is kind of lots of wailing and stuff. So there was a, um, an event that happened in Peregrine Falls. Uh, and I think it was this one. There we go. In, no, this was a fight in, in Gemini. And that's right. Let me just mention this one as quickly as well. So Darkseid uh, lost one of their structures uh, here. And as like I said, they were being pushed out of Gemini. Uh, the main thing to see here is that the, the Pandemic Horde blob is uh, making easy work of Darkseid. They just outnumber them in, in such a huge way that uh, Darkseid had really no chance of being able to stay in, uh, in Geminate. Uh, on top of that as well, obviously now Pandemic Horde is fully home uh, and we'll see later on, they've got their full Supercat uh, umbrella available to them now as well. Uh, so their, their move ops have been finished you know, over a week ago and they're getting properly settled back into their home regions again. So the uh, battle report I want to show here was uh, in Peregrine Falls. And uh, interesting enough, we had uh, the Initiative, uh, Dread Bomb, and then Greater Trash Coalition, uh, who are here. And so, oops, my pen just is going on a stop. Oh, I've got lag on my pen. Well, my computer just crashed. Okay, so I've got to try and remember where I was at. I was busy doodling, that's right. So, uh, as I was saying, we had a Greater Trash Coalition, uh, along with the Initiative and Dread Bomb, uh, all show up uh, on some whaling. And uh, that's been pretty much their activities for most of the week. So uh, in this case, as you can see, we have loads of caps drop. Uh, the raw call still, uh, a raw call was still killed. And then we had the same thing happen over in uh, Malpice. Uh, and here we had a 12 billion loss, but that 12 billion loss was primarily the raw call. So uh, the super cap umbrella was actually much more effective. You can see we actually had some nixes and stuff dropped here as well. Uh, but the thing that was interesting here was that uh, the raw call uh, belong to Brothers of Tangra. Now, Brothers of Tangra are Northern Coalition renters, and I don't know what the standing situation is there, or if it's very clear for the renters whether Panfam is supposed to help them or not, whether they should be on comms, etc. So, uh, the initiative were successful there in uh, destroying that uh, raw call, which was a fairly expensive raw call as well. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to move over to uh, Outer Passage because I need to show you. Uh, the tests have got themselves very much settled in. Uh, as of last week, all of this was, uh, all the iHubs were renter iHubs, and they've literally pretty much all been flipped in a week. So tests have been extremely busy. Uh, now that they've got all their people there and all of their you know, resources there, it looks like they're getting themselves properly dug in now. 
and setting up uh, loads of IHUBs. And uh, we'll keep an eye on that to see if uh, we see the Imperium sending out any SIG special interest groups and stuff to harass in Outer Passage. But I haven't seen anything in the last week that was uh, kind of really stood out. So, all right, now what we'll do is uh, we'll jump and do our giveaway uh, whilst I think about it. So, uh, once again, I am giving away the Abaddon Scopes Indication Skin. Uh, this may be the last time, it all depends on when the new skins are given out by uh, CCP. So there may be another round, but this may be the last time for the Abaddon skins. Uh, the keyword I am going to use this week is something that uh, we all love in EVE, from what I know of the people that watch this show, and that is Pew Pews. So Pew Pew is the keyword, that's P-E-W-P-E-W, -E -E you could put a dash in there, you could say all the pews, anything with P-E-W in it will be good for the prize draw. So be creative. As always, put a YouTube comment uh, down below with the word pew or pew pew in it and uh, we'll take it from there. And I will do the prize draw uh, after 1800 UTC on the 3rd of September. That's always a Friday 1800 UTC cutoff for the prize draw. All right, so let's go back to our universe map. Now, we're gonna be looking at um, Wrecking Crew versus uh, Fire Coalition. So if you remember last week, uh, Wrecking Crew uh, absorbed PIBC. Uh, PIBC, I'm trying to make up now, were made up of Army of Mango, Evictus, and Vindictive. Uh, I don't think I've forgotten anybody. If I do, I apologize. Uh, and uh, they basically folded into Wrecking Crew. Now, since then, uh, it appears that since last week, Red Menace Coalition, who, if you remember, live in Impasse, right here, uh, have now also sided with Wrecking Crew. So we have, basically, if I do grab my blue pen, we have this group over here. There we go. Going after this group over here. Now, if you remember, the so Fire Coalition in pink, Wrecking Crew and RMC are in blue. So let's make a blue pen and just do over that. There we go. So that's basically the two groups that are, are fighting right now. Now, if you remember last week in Tenerifis, we had an overlap of uh, Army of Mango had uh, Sov in Tenerifis as well as XIX. Now, what we've seen is that all of the Sov that was AOM, which I believe was this area here, uh, and I think they also had, yeah, and they also had this bit down here, apart from maybe DZ6. And uh, what has happened now is that XIX have flipped all of that Sov, except obviously for that one system in FTAC ZB00, uh, but I would imagine that will flip soon. What is interesting though is that Dragon Dynasty are expanding, so you can see the Dragon Dynasty are kind of making the most of it and uh, grabbing some extra solve there. Now as we know Dragon Dynasty uh, are not actually associated with Fire Coalition, but they are on good terms and uh, Fire Coalition were quite happy for them to do their own thing in Tenerifis. Also what we've seen as well is over here on the left hand side uh, we're seeing Dreadbomb kind of start to settle themselves in more into Tenerifis, so it does look like Tenerifis is becoming a flashpoint for these two groups converging. The other flashpoint being Fetherbolis, and uh, we'll come on to that a little bit later. Uh, now, there was a uh, fight that went on uh, here in KW-OAM, and as you can see, we have all of Wrecking Crew here on the left-hand side, along with Red Menace Coalition. Uh, so I know, for example, Midas 22 are Red Menace, Red Alliance is Red Menace, uh, and then obviously the rest are Wrecking Crew. And then obviously on the right-hand side, we have Fire Coalition. Now, uh, the thing that I want to point out here, and this is the thing that I think is really important, this, this was a fight over an Astra House, uh, is how evenly matched the two groups are, both in terms of numbers. So you can see that when they're bringing fights, the numbers are very, very close to each other. Uh, and then obviously the, then the losses are resulting are also fairly balanced. So this is showing, this is proving to be a very even fight. Uh, and I think both sides will be appreciating this content. Uh, when you've got about 500 people in, um, in local, it's not quite tie-dye or it's very light tie-dye generally. So uh, it should create some really, really good fights for uh, all of the groups that are involved in this. Now, some other things happened in uh, Tenerifis. Uh, first of all, Fire Coalition, uh, uh, killing quite a lot of jump gates in the region, so that's the wrong one, there we go. Uh, Sino Jammers, there we go, jump gates. So you can see uh, they've been going after uh, some Dreadbomb jump gates uh, in Tenerifis. 
uh, and uh, trying to basically slow down the movements of dread bomb in that area. So this is what I was saying about Tenerife is being clearly a flashpoint uh, and a, a point of engagement between these two groups. Now there was a little bit of a story here as well and uh, let me just get to the right uh, thing. Here we go. So this involves unfortunately a very sad red panda. So if you're not familiar, uh, literally triggered uh, are, have a red panda with a knife picking his, uh, his teeth with a knife. And so we have the red, pa uh, red sad red panda uh, because uh, Konstantin Surovj, uh, who is actually the, the main FC for Fire Coalition, we'll see that in a minute, uh, saw that uh, literally triggered had left two posses uh, run out of fuel. And that was confirmed by literally triggered. So apparently the, uh, the person in charge went off on holiday and so Konstantin showed up in just a Hecate, all on his own, and destroyed uh, two of these ship maintenance arrays, which dropped. Uh, the first one dropped a Minakawa and an Onyx. Uh, and then the second one, uh, also destroyed all on his own by Konstantin, um, dropped a Naglafar and a Broadsword. So uh, quite the scoop there for Konstantin. And uh, yeah, this is the thing when you go on holiday, unfortunately things still need to be fueled and uh, easy mistake to make. So there we go. Now, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to uh, Fethabolis, which is the other kind of flashpoint. So uh, let me bring up my universe map and go over to Fethabolis. Ah, there we go. Uh, Red Menace Coalition also includes Warriors of the Blood God. I knew I was missing somebody. Uh, so Warriors of the Blood Gods uh, have taken uh, some Sov. I think this is the first time they've taken Sov, uh, as far as I know. Uh, and um, this is an area that is kind of very mixed. So obviously we've got XIX, we're in here. Uh, they in initially came into this region to evict Invidia Gloria comes. Um, and so we've got this as kind of a real kind of front line between not only uh, Fire Coalition and against a Wrecking Crew, but also Red Menace Coalition. So oh, actually we've got Warriors of the Blood God over here. I didn't even notice that. So they already had some stuff. And then we've got Red Menace over here as well. Uh, I think RLH are associated to Red Menace. I don't know if they're actually as, as kind of a renting corp or, or not. I'll have to double check that. Uh, same with STA. But either way, so this is kind of very much a, a front line. And uh, I expect that we're going to see quite a few fights coming up. And in fact, I have another battle report right here. Uh, so this all took place in Fethabolis. And once again, you can see the pilot numbers. You know, we've got 200 for... Uh, um, this was a purely, uh, Wrecking Crew weren't involved with this one, this was purely PIBC uh, versus uh, Fire Coalition. Once again, very similar numbers, and once again, very similar numbers lost on, uh, in terms of each side on the fight. Uh, I don't even know, can't even remember what this was, uh, was uh, over. <laughs> it wasn't really that important, I don't think. The main thing is, is that we're seeing them fight, and there we go, there's Constantine and his monitor, just confirming what I was saying earlier about Constantine being one of the main FCs for Fire Coalition, well, I think the primary FC. Okay, so uh, then we are going to cover um, all of the stuff that's kind of been destroyed in the south. So before we do that though, I just need to mention Providence quickly. So if you remember last week in Providence, uh, there was a um, Blood Raider Satio that was fought over. Now I found out a little bit more about what happened there. Uh, the first thing which I didn't even think of doing was actually checking the kill mail on the Satio. They don't always generate. Uh, and the surprise here is that there was no drop of any uh, blueprints for any Blood Raider capitals. So the drop was only like 248 million, which is pretty meh, considering it was like such a, a high-end PvP target. Uh, so yeah, so no, uh, no skins were dropped. And uh, it was the locals uh, that actually initiated the attack on um, the Satio, and then uh, Winter Coalition or Fraternity specifically, as I recall, came in and uh, then tried to scoop uh, the loot from the CTO. So there we go. So that was just a quick update on stuff that I didn't have all the facts for last week. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, all of the regions in the south where we had uh, previously uh, ex-Pappy now, because obviously Pappy is now dissolved, but basically structures that belonged to Pappy or groups within Pappy that have now been destroyed. So uh, in Catch, uh, we had a test keep star uh, destroyed. Uh, in impasse, uh, we had an internal requiem keep star destroyed and a test keep star also in uh, impasse. There, so that means there's only now one brave keep star left in impasse in terms of Pappy structures. Then uh, moving on to period basis, 
uh, where was period basis over here? There we go. So in period basis, we had five warped intentions, keeps uh, Fortizars and two test Fortizars destroyed. Then in Quirius, uh, we had um, a Fortizar destroyed, yeah. Uh, and then finally in Delve, uh, we had uh, a test keep star destroyed in SVM-3K. So uh, basically, the Imperium is still continuing to clean up. There's quite a few keep stars still left that belong to Pappy all along those southern regions and obviously as they get destroyed I will report on that. Then uh, we're going to jump over to Fountain. Uh, what I want to point out with Fountain is that uh, we had a gangbang team uh, who were up here and were still kind of the last uh, region or the last sorry, constellation left within the region. Uh, the initiative have now taken that. Uh, also interestingly uh, the Bastion have now settled themselves again so if you remember they were is it Esoteria they were for a while, then they kind of got pushed out uh, and ended up uh, in Stain uh, and deploying out of Stain primarily. And then now, it now looks like they've now made themselves a home in Old Celestial Empire and Forsaken Empire territory alongside Init and the Initiative. So that's pretty much it in terms of uh, Sob Warfare. Uh, I have some sort of random kills to just bring up as well. Just a couple of things I wanted to point out, which is kind of always bring the right ship. Uh, in this case, it was an Okator uh, going through of all places Uadama, which is the probably the most dangerous low sec system. Is it low sec or high sec? High sec uh, system uh, in uh, New Eden. Uh, it is a kind of a major route through. Uh, he got ganked. Uh, what is unfortunate is obviously there was 11 billion of cargo in this Okator. Uh, it was fitted to try and be as quick as possible and as slippery as possible, but unfortunately, an Okator is just never going to be slippery. Uh, and uh, as you can see, a lot of stuff lost there. Lots and lots of different things, everything from ships to modules, a really long list. So uh, yeah, that must have really hurt when that got lost. And the, the, I think the lesson here to be learned is the, uh, is do you make a decision, I'm still scrolling, uh, do you make a decision of taking three trips, um, or sorry, taking four, four trips in a, a Viator, which is a lot faster and a lot more slippery, and probably take about three times as long, but at least you know that pretty much everything's going to get through, or at least if you do lose something, it will hopefully be just one of the three trips. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to point it out there, just the amount of stuff that was in that Aquator. So I do feel for that pilot, that, was, that must have really hurt. Uh, and then we had a Council Diplomatic Shuttle uh, in Ethereum Reach that died to Smart Bombs, which was carrying just one mod, um, sorry, seven mods, uh, but for a total of 10, 10 billion. So uh, loads of raw call pilots, they're going to miss out on their uh, I think it's 5% bonus to their mining yield uh, because someone took a shuttle through um, a Nullsec and ended up getting uh, smart bombed on a gate by a Macarial. So uh, there we go. So lessons to be learned there and with things. I just point these out, not necessarily to just you know, have a go at the pilot, but more to make people aware of just the dangers that are, do exist in, uh, in choosing your ship to transport your, your cargo. As there'll always be someone out there looking for you. So be very, very careful. All right, so um, we're going to keep the show pretty short this week because there wasn't too much news. It was kind of very much an average Eve week to this week. Uh, the, obviously, the thing I'm going to finish off on is the feeder tournament uh, for the, the feeder rounds, shall I say, for the Alliance tournament take place this weekend. That's the 4th and 5th of September over two days. Lots and lots of matches back to back. I think it starts off at about uh, 2 p.m. or 1400 UTC. It goes all the way to about 2000 UTC on both days. So it's going to be packed. Uh, I think this will be broadcast on Eve NT on their Twitch stream. So uh, do get check that out and uh, we'll find out then uh, which, which of these teams will then be going through to the Alliance tournament, which is then taking place in November. I think it's early November, if I remember correctly. All right, so um, that's pretty much it. I think I've got, I did take a look at the super cap losses. Uh, there wasn't anything particularly uh, surprising since my last show last week. Uh, these were the, the, uh, the ships that died. Uh, obviously, we've got You Are Dunked here in Declan. Uh, if you remember, You Are Dunked did kind of actually work with, your, with WeForm Volta for an op against uh, no handlebars. Uh, but here, they were very much on different sides. That, uh, that Nyx was uh, all hyperspatial, so it was a hunting Nyx, and uh, it got caught. Uh, then it looks like we had a, a couple of ratting supers from Fraternity that were destroyed. Uh, one by Pandemic Horde, one by Snuffed Out. And then this last one here, uh, the Wyvern that died in Delve. Uh, from what I could see, as you can see, it's in a, an NPC corp. Uh, it looks like uh, the pilot originally was in Get Off My Lawn. Uh, the, the corp then left Get Off My Lawn. It looks like it's been there for like three years or so. 
and uh, the pilot tried to get it out and it looks like he wasn't successful. So yeah, that kind of wraps it up. So that's all from me this week, a little bit shorter than usual. Hope you enjoyed it all the same. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications. Mention me in your Corp Discord, your Alliance Discord to keep the channel growing. It really helps us and I really appreciate all the subs that we've been getting over the last few weeks and over the last few months, to be honest. And uh, yeah, don't forget to enter the prize draw. Put your comment below. Pew pew is the keyword. That's all from me. Until the next one. Bye.